No one questioned anything when things were free-flowing like water does in a waterfall. People just enjoyed the free fall and buskied in the warmth of the joys the days were showering them with. Thinking about bad things lead to people being called cynical. Perhaps Naruto was becoming like that, but it didn't matter much. No one was going to question him about it, and no one was going to notice it. No one was close to him these days. He'd become a lone wolf of the Uzumaki clan. Questions had to be asked. It wasn't a bad thing. Then again, what did he know? He was just a brat. That was all what the adults said when he inquired about certain things. Yes, there were things children didn't have to know and things they couldn't possibly understood. It wasn't that Naruto wanted to know everything, he just hated it when the you're just a brat card was slapped on his face. What Naruto had come to understand with questions being asked about how things were going in life was that bad things didn't happen because one had done good. Good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good person. That was the cycle of life. It was interesting. Curious even. Yet, questionable. So much so that Naruto wanted to meet the person who pushed these things in life to happen the way they do. Perhaps there really was a god. If so, Naruto wouldn't mind praying to this god. So long as his ways were blessed in turn. As Naruto looked down to the village from the Hokage Monument, he saw the beautifully lit streets of the village hidden in leaves, full with activities from people of all kinds. The military police could be seen managing things from getting out of hand between loathsome drunkards and those hooligans who sought nothing but trouble. Minato had taught him how to observe the streets. He had been the one who showed him this beautiful place that intoxicated his lungs with a fresh air that just spelled nature and peace. Those had been the good days. Good days indeed. When he sat atop of this head, Naruto had felt like he was sitting atop of his beloved father's head, and now he was sitting atop of the Yandame Hokage's head. That should feel wrong, but Naruto didn't feel anything wrong with it. There was just a masked bitterness about the situation and nothing else. These days, he often found himself climbing up here to get some fresh air and just be away from everything in the village. Up here, being alone, with no one to talk to, no one seeing him, just being invisible to the village, yet being able to witness most things happening in the village. It just reflected his daily life within the hidden leaf. How he wished things W.E.R. Naruto trailed off from his train of thoughts and looked behind him. There was a man, an old man. He wasn't fond of old people these days. They frustrated him to no end. If they weren't there to bother children, then their lives would be much better. The view is quite lively from here, the old man said, walking slowly towards him. His tone was just empty of all emotions. But that didn't weird Naruto out. It wasn't like the first time he'd heard someone speak like a zombie. If you say so, Naruto responded, looking back at the village. There was a slight shrug of indifference from his right shoulder, one that the old man noticed, but didn't say anything about it. Now where had he seen this old man before? Naruto thought deep. Ah, bingo. He'd seen him in the Hokage's office. He didn't remember what the man was saying, but he had been having a heated conversation with his father, and when the man left, he was left with the unquestionable impression that the Hokage didn't like the man. Being curious, he had asked. And although his father was stingy with the details, he had warned him. What was this man's name again? A.G. He couldn't remember. But he was sure it started with A.D. Ah. He probably forgot because he didn't need to know the man. If it had been important, he wouldn't have forgotten. Why do you come here so often? Didn't you just say the view is quite lively? Danzo nearly frowned. Perhaps he should be smiling. But this wasn't going to run smoothly as he would like. The redhead didn't seem to have any interest in starting a conversation with him if that indifference was anything to go by. The good thing was that he didn't seem to know who he was. I did. Danzo conceded. 
Uzumaki Naruto, I'd like to speak with you, somewhere private. Naruto shook his head. Mother said not to go anywhere private with strangers. So, I will have to decline. I won't hurt you if that is what you're afraid of, Danzo said quietly. I am one of the village elders and was one of the Sandame's teammates. I wouldn't wish any harm to the future of Kanoha. Naruto just repeated what his mother told him, no matter how good it sounds, don't go and don't say yes. Just because it looks and smells like candy doesn't mean it is candy. Obviously, the child wasn't going to go with him unless he used force. But that wouldn't end well for him, especially with how things were in the village. The damned Hokage had made it difficult to move about and one wrong move from him would end him in trouble. There was no Hiruzen to manipulate in that office now. Minato might be peace-minded like the Sandame, but he didn't concede to pressure. You have become overlooked by the villagers. No one notices you anymore and your parents don't love you anymore. The first is true, but then again, I never deserved the love in the first place. The second is false. My parents love me. There was defiance in Naruto tone. Danzo liked it. He liked them this way. They all eventually broke and he would pick up the pieces and shape them into his preferred image. If they so loved you, why are you sitting here alone? Why don't they take you to the park anymore? It's night time. Any loving parent would be concerned with the whereabouts of their children. Are you telling that even if your parents wouldn't notice that you didn't come back home, they still love and care for you? Danzo changed his tone. Don't be naive, child. Naruto didn't say anything. Simply because he'd chosen to ignore what Danzo was saying and focus on his thoughts, and they were going like this. He seriously had to do something to change the situation that was facing him. He couldn't allow the situation to remain as it was. Certainly, getting some freedom would mean becoming 18. And then he would be clan head. But there was no way to cheat age. Unless there was some sort of time travel machine that could make him travel to the future, or a machine that could make him 18. Say, is there a way I can magically turn 18? Naruto asked. He seemed serious about his query. The fact surprised Danzo more than it should. Danzo blinked once. There was an urge for a second round, but he held himself. Did the child just ignore all that emphatically delivered speech for this stupid question? Those words he'd said had to have had an effect because some of it was true, but the child hadn't reacted to it, almost as if he hadn't heard it. What was wrong with this kid? I guess there is none, Naruto said, seeing that Danzo wasn't going to answer him. Then it was becoming Jonin then. This was the quickest way. He didn't want to remain invisible. He wanted to become a light that would overshadow all other lights. He wanted to be spoken about by everyone, more than they spoke about the Yandame Hokage. This was the only way he would become visible. Becoming Jonin would remove some of the limits that were placed on him. That was something worth looking forward to. He had to go to the academy, though. This was the only way he could become a Jonin. Kakashi had gone through the academy first. All great shinobi attended the academy. It was his time. Have you thought about entering the academy? Danzo asked. Ah, Naruto yelped as if he'd been hit. Adults can really read minds. He cried, holding his head, trying to shield it from further penetration from the old man. So you have thought of it, Danzo said quietly. It won't teach you anything that will get you recognized. Those who have excelled in the academy have done so because they received training as well. I can give you that special training. Naruto turned to face Danzo, a curious look on his face. He then beamed up slightly. Danzo, he said a bit happily. I'm sorry, but father said not to do anything with you. He said you're a bad person. It was all said while the redhead had his perfect smile. Where is that father now? At least I'm here trying to offer you my help. Naruto's eyes opened slightly and his smile shrunk a bit. 
He looked behind Danzo and said, Otusama, what are you doing here? Danzo's neck nearly snapped as he twisted around. But when he looked, there was no one. There was no Minato behind him. It was a bluff, and as he turned around, Naruto was nowhere to be seen. He disappeared. Was he just ticked by a seven-year-old with selective hearing capabilities? That was honestly disappointing. Really, Danzo had never had such a failed first impression. The brat didn't seem interested in hearing what he was saying. There was no way he could have gone about it. The gaki was just impossible. How was he supposed to land a first good impression on someone who only heard what he wanted to hear? Well, he wasn't going to give up. It was back to the drawing board once again and Danzo wouldn't fail unless there was outside interference. A brat who thought it was possible to magically turn 18 couldn't win in a battle against him. He had to admit, however, that the first round belonged to the brat. Uzumaki Compound Back in the uncomfortable main house within the lively Uzumaki Compound, Naruto was in his own dining room, eating his dinner. It was already past dinner time, but who cared what time he ate? It wasn't like his parents were going to suddenly pop up out of nowhere and start questioning him about his eating habits and how he has been doing. So, he could do as he pleased. Naruto-sama, a polite caretaker, called as she walked into his space. Perhaps the calling was simply to introduce herself as she was interrupting his meal time. Hmm? Azumi didn't hide her surprise when Naruto responded just like that. She normally had to call his name multiple times before he could respond. Sometimes he didn't even bother responding. He just ignored her presence. This was the first time that he had responded on first calling. It was so much of a shock than a surprise that she just stood, staring at him. Naruto-sama? Azumi called, once again. This time a bit questionably. Her tone suggested she wasn't sure she was talking to the right person. Looking at that expression, Naruto couldn't fault her. He was hardly a likable person to people he found to be nuisances. He didn't care for it, nevertheless. He didn't like the attention anyway. Well, the attention being given to him because he was Minato's son anyway. It had been great those naive days but now Naruto saw it as nothing but a curse covered in ramen noodles. Am I eating with my nose rather than my mouth? Naruto asked, just to get the team to talk. Azumi quickly shook her head and opened her mouth, but no word came out. She closed it and cocked her head to the side before her voice finally kicked in and she spoke. Your mother was asking for you. So? Azumi blinked. That was unexpected. She didn't have an immediate response to that kind of a careless response. How was she supposed to respond? She thought hard and finally said. She was worried. Oh, Naruto said, staring at his meal. He then looked at the team before him. He blinked. He'd never really taken the time to really look at her appearance. She wasn't that old. That he knew. She was in her early teens, had long red hair, blue eyes, like most Uzumakis. She wore a simple long blue dress. Where is she? Sleeping, Azumi responded quickly. Figures, Naruto gave his own quick response. I have a few questions. Can you join me? I don't know, Azumi hesitated. I was supposed to have been home some time ago. I don't want Obasan to worry about me. Then again, she is probably dead in her sleep. The last part was said in a whisper. Naruto smiled pleasantly. Please, he trailed off when her name couldn't come up to his head. Well, that was embarrassing. But he didn't stop smiling. He just turned it sheepish and spoke in an apologetic smile. Sorry, I forgot your name. Azumi, the teen said. You didn't forget it. You just never learned it the day I was introduced to you. You have a habit of letting things pass through your ears when you don't want to hear them. Naruto just continued smiled. Guilty as charged, he said. 
So, Azumi, will you please sit with me? As you said, your Obasan is probably asleep right now. You can afford to spare some time. Even so, I don't want to make it a habit of going back home later. I understand that, Naruto said pleasantly. But I need your help with something. How about this, I will listen to you as you tell me more about yourself after you have answered my questions. That sounds fair, no? It's fair enough, Azumi said, sitting across Naruto beside the small table. How can I be of service? What am I to you? Naruto asked, curiously. Azumi adopted a thoughtful look on her face, hands folded across his her small bust. I'm like your guardian. I'm supposed to watch over you, ensure that you're well taken care of and that all your needs are taken care of. Who chose you? Your mother, Azumi said. Clan heirs are supposed to have guards with them at all times. But your mother didn't want you to have a shinobi visible with you all the time as that wouldn't make you free at all times to do what you wish. So instead, she chose me to look after you. I see, Naruto said, pausing for a moment. Why haven't I seen you following me outside of the compound? You're not always by my side. Yes, you are there for my lessons, ensuring I eat and other things. But not always. I have other duties within the clan, Azumi said. Besides, when you go outside, I can't do much. I'm forced to remain here and wait for your return. I don't worry because I know nothing bad will happen. Lately, there has been a lot happening, so even I understand you need some fresh air outside. Naruto nodded, understanding. I don't have friends, and lately I've been feeling a lot lonely. My parents were my friends, but I don't have them anymore so that part is starting to reveal itself. Why don't you make friends? Naruto shrugged. Will you be my friend, Azumi? I don't have anyone to talk to here, and I'm afraid I will lose it if it continues to be so, the redhead smiled nervously. Sure, why not? I'm here for you, Azumi said with a smile. Excellent, Naruto said, clapping his hands once. My terms are limited, for succession either I become 18 or Jonin. 18 is out of the question. So the only option is Jonin. At that stage, I won't have to listen to that old hag. How do I become Jonin? Enter the academy, Azumi said. She then frowned. But in your case, unless you force it, they won't allow for it to happen. If you choose the path of the shinobi, the village will come first. You won't be always available for the clan as you will be doing missions. And for someone who is to be clan head, that is not an ideal situation. Naruto frowned. This would be a problem. It was either he got stuck serving Kanoha or working for the clan. Both paths weren't so bad, he could still go his way regardless of the option he took. What he hated was the fact that these were lanes put up for him. It felt as if he was being blindsided into going through a direction. There was no such as true freedom, was there? I can go to the academy, learn what is needed to improve myself and become Jonin, and then we will deal with other matters. I realize there is no other way I can become Jonin without going through the academy first, Naruto said. That was what he would do. Why should I stay away from that old man named Danzo? Azumi blinked before speaking in a serious tone. He is a bad person. Very bad. Naruto tilted his head to the side. I assume so, he said. But what? If he is as bad as he sounds, then you must know something. As my guardian, you must be informed. Well, Danzo is not a secret. Some things are, but what I can tell you is that his people have been caught in the compound trying to break into our library, and he has been campaigning to have the QB given to him so he can tame it and make it his weapon. Azumi said, Obasan can't stand him. She said he is evil and power hungry. Well, she is evil herself. She must be able to sense others in her wavelength, Naruto said with a smile, drawing a giggle from Azumi. That's about it. 
Academy is decided. So, Uzumaki Azumi, what do you do aside from this? While you're at it, you can tell me about yourself as promised. Azumi beamed up, but she didn't say anything about herself. I have a question, first, she said. I don't understand you. Can I be honest with you? Naruto nodded. You frustrate me. Your ignorance to be precise. Your question. Naruto obviously saw no wrong with his ignorance. He was aware of it. Ah, uh, never mind, Azumi said. There was a bit of frustration in her tone, and she felt like pulling her hair. She had an idea he wouldn't listen anyway, and even if he does listen, he was going to offer a half-hearted response. I don't have to tell you about myself. You will learn, just as I have learned a few things about you. She stood up and offered a smile. Good night, Naruto-sama. Academy the entrance to the academy wasn't anything spectacular or grand, it is just the normal thing that happens at every year beginning. Perhaps his entrance was just a little curious since the registration period was already over and the Shinobi Academy had started a month ago. But Naruto wasn't going to entertain any questions about his late entrance, even if he knew very well that he is abusing the privilege of being the Hokage's son. This was a matter in which felt no problems in using his father name to get what he wants. Well, it wasn't like most people were complaining anyway. Naruto arrived at his class, just in time. He hadn't made the effort of coming to class early just to be a good student. He had his reasons for coming here, and it was to grow. Coming early didn't help in any matter. He had no desire to become the teacher's loved student or sulk up to anyone. The class was full, all eyes turned to the only redhead in the class. Naruto just walked in and went towards the man sitting behind the desk in front of the class and handed in his registration form. The man looked at him for a moment, a look of recognition went through before he smiled at him. Buzumaki Naruto, he said to the redhead in a light tone. Our Yandame son, I expect great thing from you. Your father was an excellent student during his days. You ought to follow his footsteps. On his first day, this was his welcome. Just wonderful. He thought the fact that he wasn't using Namakes would shield him from these madness, and it wasn't. He hated being reminded of this. He hated being told he had to be like his father. He hated that he had to hide the shadow of that man who no longer felt like a father to him. He was Uzumaki Naruto, not Minato's son. Couldn't they just see him as such? Even with these thoughts inside his head, Naruto smiled at the sensei, eyes closed, naturally, he said lightly. The sensei stood up from behind his desk and walked up to the redhead, his hand on Naruto's left shoulder. There had been an urge from Naruto to say, get your hand off me, but he held himself. Okay. Everyone, there was no need to tell the class to be quiet. Clam was already in class. She had walked in the moment the sensei walked up to Naruto. This is our new student, Uzumaki Naruto. Some of you may recognize him, and yes, he is the Yandame Hokage's son. The reaction was certainly different from what Naruto expected from his new classmates. They really did recognize that he was there, unlike the adults. Yet he felt bitter because the only reason they were even acknowledging his presence was because he was the Yandame Hokage's son. One thing that stood out of everything was the reaction of some girls. His form was stared at with these eyes he found curious. He didn't understand it all, but it was certainly not the eyes of hate. They seemed to like him and were whispering a few things, which he couldn't make off. He would have to ask Izumi what those eyes mean. Naruto flashed the girls a smile, his eyes weren't closed, and they just shone brightly, with a bit of his teeth out, and went on to take a sit at the back of his class. Once settled down, he looked back at the sensei, waiting for the class to start so that he could learn something useful. Oh, Naruto, why don't you introduce yourself, and tell the whole class your dreams, the sensei quickly said as if he'd forgotten to say that before that he went to take his seat. Just great. Naruto didn't object. It was his first day in class after all. 
he certainly didn't want to make enemies with the sensei on his first day. This wasn't ideal, but it had to be done. It was apparently the way things were done, and he had to abide by it. As Sensei has already said, I am Uzumaki Naruto, from the Uzumaki clan, and my dream is to become the Godame Hokage after my father. That was believable enough. He wasn't just some random brat with big dreams that seemed unattainable. He was the Yandame Hokage's son. Anything was possible, and he was sure that if he'd said anything less, the class and the sensei would have been disappointed and Naruto gave them what they wanted to hear to avoid unnecessary questions. The perfect introduction. As expected, the sensei said. When those words reached his ears, Naruto was certain he wasn't going to like that man. He was becoming a source of frustrations, and Naruto was certain this would go on until he graduated from this place. Ah, when was that day coming? As Naruto sat down, he felt some piercing eyes staring at him, and he looked to the side of the class. Black hair, black eyes equal to Uchiha. Naruto was certain he was supposed to know who the Uchiha was, but he couldn't remember. Perhaps he had been playing deaf when he was being told. Oh well, he would know eventually. Given the kind of look he was being given, Naruto didn't bother smiling at those black eyes that were looking at him strangely. He looked for a second and looked the other way. What was that all about? Itachi wondered. Given how the redhead was flashing smiles around for everyone, he figured that he would also receive one. But that wasn't quite what happened. The young Uchiha was surprised. It wasn't just the lack of smile, but Naruto's tone as well. The young Uzumaki had merely stated what was expected of him to say. There was some detachment in the thought of succeeding his father as Hokage, and that made Itachi curious. He wasn't expecting the son of the Hokage to be like that. Still, this just made things all the more interesting. The redhead was clearly above average. Just from the way he carried himself in those moments, Itachi's trained eyes were able to see that the Uzumaki carried himself well. He wasn't like the other kids. Three hours later. Okay class, we're going to the training grounds. Naruto had heard those words from the sensei with his mind occupied about other things. There wasn't anything so far being taught that he hadn't been taught already. He may not know all the answers, but he was sure those people back the home had taught him everything that the thing was that he had a tendency to play the ignorant card. Not every little information and knowledge being drilled into his head was necessary and important and so Naruto was picky with what he chose to hear. He felt slightly relieved when the sensei said they could go to the training ground. This was the first time and so he was happy to see how things would proceed within the training ground. The classes were a bore. And they weren't going to do anything to make that thought he'd first had about not getting along with his sensei change. Naruto Kuen. But, perhaps that man had been right. Well, this was still day one. There was a lot that could within the next couple of days. He had a mission here, and he wouldn't leave until that mission was on track. As of now, he hadn't achieved anything. He had no skills whatsoever, so that was a problem in his quest to grow. Naruto Kuen. Was it just him? Was there someone calling him? A tug on his left shoulder caused Naruto to halt in his movements, falling back from the class towards the academy training grounds. When he looked back, he saw three girls behind him, faces red. He couldn't hope to begin to guess what was going on in their heads. Naruto Kuen? Yes. Naruto responded in a welcoming tone. Well, his mother had taught him to be nice to girls. She said always treat a girl with care and don't bully them. Well, unless they wanted to do that to you. But he was supposed to play nice to girls. He didn't understand the necessity of such a chore, but his mother had simply told him to do as he was told and that he would understand once he grew. Yeah, right. I was, that's how far Naruto listened before he looked elsewhere. He was getting left behind by the rest of his classmates. We're getting left behind, Naruto said to the girl, turning away from her. 
why don't you say what you want as we walk? Of course he said that, but he wasn't really listening to what she was saying. He had a feeling it wasn't anything important and he just pretended to listen just so to keep appearance. He didn't want to be known as the cold and rude Uzumaki who ignored his classmates. Naruto didn't see the irony in his thoughts and what he was doing. Who cared anyway? The girl didn't seem to notice that he was just nodding, not really listening to her. The group arrived at the training ground and the sensei stood out amongst the students. His smile was bright enough for everyone to see. Okay, before we start teaching you academy taijutsu, I want a demonstration. His eyes fell on Itachi, the top student. Itachi, why don't you come here? The black-haired obliged quietly. Who wants to take Itachi on? None of the boys wanted to take the Uchiha on. Naruto wasn't about to jump in the fray without knowing anything. There had to be a reason no one was volunteering to take on the Uchiha. From what he had observed so far, the silent Uchiha was probably the top student, and judging from his demeanor, he had no friends, but the girls seemed to spend all their attention towards him. Of course the Uchiha just ignored it all with a cool air. Naruto Curses Naruto smiled at his sensei. Yes? He knew what the man wanted, but he wasn't really looking forward to it. The reason was simple. He was afraid. He wasn't of Itachi or anything. He was afraid that he may disappoint. What happens then? All that hype that he'd gathered would be crushed. The unknown was really scary. His mind couldn't really guess how things would end out, and that scared him enough that he didn't want to take part in anything. Why don't you spar with Itachi? It's nothing serious. Your father must take some time to teach you. So show us what you can do. How little the man knew. Naruto frowned for a second. He hoped no one noticed it. That man hadn't taught him anything. Sure, he was his father had given him love and affection during those days, but there was nothing now and he hadn't spoken about training with him. Not that it would help. If the man was unable to spend two minutes with him at home, he wouldn't be able to spend an hour with him in the training ground. Since he was asked, Naruto didn't refuse. He walked towards the Uchiha, smiling. There were whispers amongst the students all of which Naruto let pass through his ears as he didn't want to know what was being said. It was probably just gossip and annoying talk. Itachi showed Naruto the peace sign the sensei ordered and the Uchiha did as told. Now hold it. Take you stance. And begin. As soon as he said begin, it was all over. Even Itachi was surprised. He had a look of surprise about him, and that was much emotion anyone in the class had ever seen from him. The stoic Uchiha had widened his eyes and looked shocked at how quickly it had ended. He wasn't the only one. Lame. Yandame's son. PFT. So weak. Disappointing. Itachi Kuen is the best. Naruto was on the ground on his butt. He couldn't ignore those whispers. He heard them loud and clear. But they didn't do much to his pride. Losing within a second. Uzumaki Naruto had pathetically lost without even fighting back. It may be a spar, but his loss was embarrassing. For someone who came with recommendations and all the glory of Minato's achievements. It had been an embarrassment. Even the sensei didn't hide his disappointment. It was obvious to him that Naruto couldn't fight. After everything he had said, and this was the best he could do? Pathetic. Naruto was furious with himself. How could he have lost like that? Sure, he hadn't received any training, but to be embarrassed on his first day in the academy. It got worse when other kids started laughing at how quickly it ended. Some even suggesting he was just a phony and asking if he was really the Yandame Hokage's son because there is no way if that were true he could have lost like that. The Uzumaki was torn. To be called a disappointment. An embarrassment. 
Worst of all, he was certain from now on, the other kids would be either poking fun at him or just ignoring him. There was nothing special about him. He was a loser. He wasn't even worthy to be called the son of Namake's Minato. A weakling. Weak. Embarrassment. Disappointment. Nothing. Just behind the Yandame's shadow. Those words bounced up and down inside Naruto's head, and for the first time in his life, Naruto lost his smile. He couldn't smile. He had been embarrassed. He wanted nothing more than to just run away from here and never come back. Yes, it didn't matter if he just joined today. He could just lock himself in the Uzumaki compound and hide from this. But the fact the only a cold shoulder was waiting for him at home, and the realization that nothing would change. And a thought did come, no one would be calling him the Yandame's son now. No, he would simply become Naruto. And that was something that warmed up his heart. It brought back his smile. Restrained as it was, it was still forced back into show. It was on that day that Naruto swore that he would never be humiliated like this again. He swore he would never lose like this again, and if it does happen, it would lead to his death. Okay, students. Go back to class. I'm going to have to cut this short, the sensei said in a firm tone. Everyone go back. Except for you, Naruto. The redhead remained on his butt as the sensei walked up to him and gave him his hand to help him stand up. Naruto took it and looked at the man curiously. I'm sorry for putting you through that. He didn't sound very apologetic despite his words. Clan children are privileged to be trained at home and have access to their clan's library. Itachi excels because he takes advantage of what is available to him. I thought the same would be for. Especially since you're more privileged than him. Naruto said nothing. There was something in that tone that he didn't like. I could send you home, but you can't blame anyone for that show, the man said firmly. Dust up yourself and follow me back to class. Naruto looked at the retreating man with a blank look on his face. Never. Never. Never again would he allow himself to be humiliated like that. Never again. Not in a million year lifetime. Nobody was going to ever walk all over his pride again. Not the Yandame, not the Uchiha, not the Hyuga, not anyone famed as the strongest shinobi. Hell, not even the fearsome Kyuubi. Right there and then, that promise to himself was the step that pushed him into the path of a legend. Later that day, as soon as Naruto stepped into the compound's large gates, Hiwi was welcomed by a stern-looking old woman who looked ready to devour him. Yoshino was looking at him with both disappointment and displeasure. It was almost scary that it forced Naruto to smile nervously, eyes closed wondering what was wrong. Was it coming home late? Well, that didn't matter much. This was not the face he wanted to see after a frustrating day. The old hag was surely going to ruin it further, and Naruto didn't want that. It was just a pity he couldn't avoid it. Obasan? Yoshino regarded him for a few moments. How pathetic. I heard you went to the academy and embarrassed our clan. I don't even remember allowing you to go there in the first place. Worst of all, you had to embarrass our clan in front of the whole village. What do you have to say for yourself? Did you think just because you are Minato's son, you will naturally be better than him? Don't fool yourself, you naive child. You're not even as good as your mother or father in Fuinjutsu. Your skills are just acceptable, and you don't even know the proper Taijutsu stance, and yet you have the guts to pick up a fight. I didn't pick up a fight. Naruto more or less shouted. He wasn't in a good mood right now. He didn't want to be Minato. He wanted to be Uzumaki Naruto. He understood that he was nothing. But that condensing tone was just hard to take in. Naruto hated it. It didn't make him feel the defensive urge to smile at the senile old hag. Are you raising your voice on me, Naruto? 
Yoshino asked in a low and dangerous tone. Isn't that obvious? Naruto wanted to snap, but he held himself. Sorry, he said. It was clear that he didn't mean it. He was merely saying it for the sake of it. She was accusing him of picking fights at the academy when it wasn't true. He'd simply been asked to do it and he did. It ended with humiliation, but he didn't start nor ask for it. Couldn't her head wrap around the idea? Perhaps he needed to spell it out for her to understand. She must have heard wrong. Her ears have been hearing things for far too long. They must be tired by now for all the work they've been doing in these past decades. You're the heir of the Uzumaki, and if the responsibility is too much for you or if you can't meet our expectations, we will replace you with Karen. Do you understand what I'm saying, Naruto? Whether she meant it or not, it was a question only she could answer. Naruto tilted his head to the side and put on his beloved mask, Crystal, he said. Yoshino was sure she was must have been seeing things. But Naruto's eyes had been partially opened, and there was just some coldness that seeped out. It would be frightening for a brat to have such a look. Yoshino immediately shook off the thought as her eyes playing tricks on her. She merely said what she said to make the redhead work hard. But it seemed as if the boy had taken her seriously. Well, that will make him work hard. Good, Yoshino said, all smiling now and seemingly satisfied. If I hear a word of another embarrassment, you will be forbidden from going to the academy until you learn how to properly represent our clan. Do you understand? Naruto gave a subtle nod and Yoshino turned away. Slowly. It wasn't because it was intentional. She just couldn't walk fast. Old age. Naruto has been saying the woman was over a century old. Buzumaki Naruto straightened himself, smile washed away. There was no sign of it having been placed on his face, and his eyes were just blank. Never. Never ever again would he be beaten like that. Never ever again would he be humiliated. His worth, existence, it depended on. Naruto calmed his thoughts and smiled before running past the old woman without a word said to her. Within a couple of minutes, he'd reached the main house. And he searched for Izumi until he found her, waiting for him. Naruto smiled at the teenage girl. Azumi-chan, he greeted happily. Naruto-sama, Azumi said with a smile. You're looking happy today. Did you enjoy your first day in the academy? He could have smiled and said it was miserable. But that would have scared his dear guardian. What sort of person says the day was miserable while smiling? Narcissist? Or perhaps a masochist? Naruto wasn't that kind of a person and so he lost his smile and showed how displeased and bitter he was. Humiliating, one word summed it all up. How? Azumi asked curiously. Naruto shrugged. A miserable story for another day, he said. Who is Uchiha Itachi? Azumi blinked. How can you not know, Naruto-sama? She shook her head. Your ignorance baffles me sometimes. Uchiha Itachi is the heir of the Uchiha clan. He is known as the light of the Uchiha and he is a genius prodigy. He is the best. Naruto frowned. Ignorance was truly a terrifying thing. But his motto had been ignorance is bliss. Would he change it? Maybe, maybe not. And I'm the disgrace of the Uzumaki clan, Naruto said with all the bitterness he could muster. He was an embarrassment. The one who made the kids laugh while ridiculing him for how weak he was. No, you're not. Azumi said rather quickly. Naruto smiled at her attempts to console him. Do you what some kids even questioned if I was really Minato's son? Hell, I'm certain they are now telling their parents all about it and tomorrow, as I walk towards that damned place, they will be looking down on me as if I'm some pathetic brat. There was a bitter smile still. Well, it's good they stripped my father's shadow away from me. I won't have to look at it. But my own shadow, Naruto said. 
What really happened? Azumi asked, all worried by now. You will find out eventually, Naruto said calmly. Why do some girls look at me with red faces while fidgeting? Azumi blinked and laughed nervously. Why is your face red? You're seeing things, Naruto-sama, Azumi said quickly as she composed herself. Are you not hungry? Do you need anything? You're not going to answer me. Oh well, it's nothing I won't know eventually. Besides, there are other important matters we must deal with. Where are my parents? Your father has yet to return. And last time I checked your mother has yet to return since leaving earlier. She has been making up for all the time she spent locked up in the house. Naruto just nodded. Take me to the library. At this time? Why? I want to learn, Naruto simply said. I want to learn how to fight. I want to strengthen myself. It's good that you want to take your training and study seriously, but we can do that tomorrow. You should go wash up, eat and rest. You seem like you had a long day, Azumi said with a smile. Naruto smiled pleasantly, his eyes radiating with pure innocence. He cut the distance between him and Azumi and took her right hand, gently. Azumi-chan, please. We won't take long, and in return, I will do things for you, things only that I can do. Azumi contemplated for a few moments before finally speaking, fine, she said but only because you want to learn and I want to see it so. Naruto's smile turned into a grin. You're the best, you know? Azumi took it. Of course I am. I wasn't, I wouldn't have been selected to do this job, she said, now leading Naruto out of the main house. They walked for a few minutes and reached what was perhaps the largest building in the compound. Azumi did some hand seals before walking in, and she just told him to enter. Why don't I get to do hand seals? Azumi regarded the redhead for a moment before speaking. I'm not supposed to say, but there's a seal on you that makes it easy for you to go through most barriers within the compound. That's good to know, Naruto said, visibly struggling to contain his excitement. As he walked into the library, Naruto came to a halt. Is this really a library? Of course. Our clan has history dating back to centuries ago. We have recorded all the bloody battles between the Uchiha and Senju. And since the latter were our brethren, we have some of their secrets in here as well, Azumi said. Everything you need to know about all shinobi arts is in here. Clan things are in ground zero. There sure is a lot of reading to be done, Naruto said in thought. How do I multitask? Isn't there a jutsu that lets you do that? I can't read what I need to know within this year. Azumi looked thoughtful for a few seconds before nodding to herself. Let's go to Senju Toborama's section. There should be something there if I'm not mistaken. Senju Toborama. Who is he? Really, Naruto-sama? Azumi said with a look on her face. The redhead just smiled. I'm just messing with you. Of course I know who he is. His face is on the Hokage Monument. Second to the first, the young Uzumaki explained. That's obvious enough, Azumi said. There we are. I'm sure this it was somewhere here. You have searched for it before, not a question, but a statement. Naturally, I have too much work to do. Sometimes I need to just rest. But I was never able to learn it because it requires a lot of chakra which I didn't have. Sounds like something I will like, Naruto said smiling. Uchiha Compound The head of the Uchiha clan looked at his son with a smile. How he was proud to have such a son. Perhaps witnessing what he witnessed had been a blessing. He didn't regret his choice to take Itachi to the battlefield of a war. His son had learned, and he was growing up to be something that he was very proud of. The whole clan was taking a new direction because of this genius he had birthed. He could only hope young Sasuke does follow the same path as his brother. I heard Minato's son came to the academy today, Fugaku said. 
He knew very well what he was talking about. Itachi nodded. Why do you say it like that? Phrasing it right would have been to say that he heard that the redhead had registered to the academy. Instead, his father had said it as if the Uzumaki had merely come to the academy to visit. Itachi was certain that the boy had registered and was going to be his classmate for the rest of the year. His father's statement only made him curious. Fugaku smiled at Itachi. Expect his son to be perceptive. He was indeed truly blessed. He wasn't supposed to be at the academy. Itachi's curiosity only grew. Naruto was meant to be just the son of the Uzumaki clan, Fugaku said. I don't know what made that stubborn old woman change her mind. Perhaps it was the current situation or she just realized she couldn't stop him. Did he force his way? He might have gone without telling anyone, Fugaku said with a smile. That was another interesting character, young Naruto. What is your impression of him? He is weak, physically at least. I beat him today. More like humiliated him, Itachi said with a frown. To be honest with himself, he had expected something of a challenge from the Yandame's son. How did he expect the son of a powerful man such as Kanoha's yellow flash to be weak enough to be defeated without an effort? He hadn't even been trying and yet the redhead hadn't seen his movements. Fugaku didn't look concerned by that. In fact, he wasn't surprised by it. It seemed as if he had expected such a result. Naruto has never fought before. I assume that they have only been focused on teaching him Fuenjutsu. You have been training for a long time, but he hadn't fought in his life. Defeat was the only possible result. I suspected as much, Itachi said. Why? Fugaku shook his head. How did he take his defeat? Hard to tell, but he was shocked. He doesn't seem to hold a grudge against me, though. Keep an eye on him, Fugaku said. He might be your competition to become Hokage. You understand our clan's position, right? Itachi nodded. I have been working with Minato to change things. We are making progress, but there is still some distrust. I can live with it. You are our hope. If you continue this way, you will be loved, you will be light, and that light will be shed upon us. Itachi nodded. He assumed his father was working with the Yandame Hokage to restore some of the power that was stripped away from the clan by the previous council and before Minato became Hokage. Of course this change brought a cheerful demeanor into his father. If there had been plans to take back power forcefully, they were laid to rest. What needed to be worked on was gaining the trust of the villagers. That was what he was supposed to do. And his father apparently had the intentions for him to become Hokage, fairly. The following day. Naruto-sama, Azumi said, shaking the redhead, trying to wake him up. They'd slept in the library. She shouldn't have allowed for it to happen. But she had fallen asleep while Naruto was still trying to practice the jutsu he'd been searching for. The young Uzumaki must have slept out of tiredness from all the work he was doing. It was okay for him to use chakra since they had taught him how to use it before he started trying Fuenjutsu. He learned theory before that, but practical work required the use of chakra, and given that Naruto started learning at a young age, they had to be careful so not to hurt his chakra system. Hmm? Naruto murmured his eyes slowly opening. He winced as he got up. It felt like he had received a beating from that senile old woman. His whole body hurt. Perhaps it was because of the fact that he had exhausted himself and slept on the cold floor. Is it morning already? Naruto asked. He couldn't tell the time while in the library. The place seemed to be cut off from the rest of the world. Azumi nodded. You should hurry up home and clean yourself before heading to the academy, she said a bit hurriedly. It wouldn't be a good work for her to allow him to ditch class. I'm not going today, Naruto said in a matter of fact. He got up on his feet and collected the scrolls on the floor. I start training today. 
I wish to first master the jutsu before anything so that I can get some work done by the end of the day. Just after he collected the scrolls, Azumi took them from him. You're going to the academy. You will do this after your classes. Naruto smiled, head to tilt to the side. Really? Yes, really, Azumi said firmly with a nod to emphasize. Naruto wasn't going to get into an argument. Really, he hated arguing about anything. Especially when he knew he wasn't going to win. And so he nodded. I will head home. You should do the same. You don't want that old hag to find you smelling with yesterday's clothes. I'm sure she will be pissed. Azumi shivered and ran off with the scrolls on her hands. Naruto frowned. I thought she would drop them off, but oh well, he shrugged and followed her towards the exit of the library. Once out, Naruto headed straight to his home. After washing up, he decided to get an hour once again in grasping his new jutsu. He could only make one stable clone after all those hours he spent learning it. So another hour would do him some good and he would send the clone to the academy to do his dirty work. An hour passed and Naruto went to the main kitchen to get something to eat. His food was usually prepared, but there was nothing there since Izumi had yet to get there. He hadn't found himself anywhere near the stove making himself something to eat. Naruto found his mother, eating by herself. She had a tired look about her. But she quickly masked it as she tried to smile at him. Good morning, Naruto, she greeted happily. It felt awkward just saying it. When was the last time she ever said that to her son? Thinking about it, she hadn't been seeing him around the house that often. Then again, she wasn't around that much herself. Still, it was wrong that she just felt somehow greeting her son. Mother, Naruto said quietly. That hurt. Naruto didn't respond to her like that. He was always lively around his beloved mother. What was wrong? Had she not been paying him enough attention? As of late things have really become hectic, with assuming the clan head responsibilities, Karen and her life in general. Naruto didn't make things better because he wasn't usually available. Not that she blamed him for anything. Kushina's smile faltered at Naruto's flat response to her. He hadn't even bothered looking at her. He was looking around, probably for something to eat. She stood up. Sit down and I will make something for you, she offered. Naruto hesitated for a moment before nodding and he silently sat down. The minutes that followed were full of a toxic silence. It was just downright suffocating. So much that Naruto applauded himself for being able to sit through it. Perhaps it was because he was really hungry. There you go, Kushina said with a nervous smile as she handed Naruto his full plate. She knew he didn't hold back when it came to food. One of the reasons he was growing up quickly and healthy. Thank you, Naruto said in a quiet tone and began to eat. Kushina didn't continue with her meal. She'd lost her appetite. So, she started, but had nothing further to say. You look tired, Naruto said without looking at his mother. I hardly slept last night. Karen has something. I don't know, but she hasn't been able to sleep recently. I can't sleep while she is still awake. When she is not crying, she can be too energetic. Leaving her alone would be a risk. Naruto simply nodded and went back to eat quietly. Once done, he thanked his mother for the food before saying something about Karen. I hope she gets well soon, he said with a small smile and walked away. There was so much more that Kushina wanted to say, but she couldn't. She didn't know how to say it. She wanted to call him to return so they could talk. She wanted to ask him to be available for lunch so that they could go to the park along with Karen. She wanted to teach him some things she hasn't like she used to do months ago. She wanted to be with her son. But all she could do was watch his back as he walked away from her and she was certain she wouldn't see him again that day. Before he could completely disappear, Kushina pushed, Naruto. Yes, mother. 
Naruto responded, turning around to face his mother. Kushina wanted to tell him to have a good day. All she ended up saying was, I'm sorry. Naruto merely smiled, it was a sad smile, and walked away. As he reached the entrance, he found Izumi standing there with a blank look on her face, hands folded across her chest. Done already? What are you still doing here? We have been talking a lot over the past two days. Naruto said walking past the team. What is it? You were usually ignoring me, Azumi said, following the redhead. Her frown clearly indicated that it hadn't been a fun experience to be ignored by Naruto. It had been downright frustrating sometimes. Used to, Naruto corrected. But of course, if you say things I don't want to hear, I won't hear them, he added smiling, Azumi frowned. He then stopped. Where are my scrolls? Forgot them at home, Azumi said. So, you're not going to the academy and I can't drag you there, she said. Naruto nodded. My scrolls. I wish to disappear from here, he then smiled nervously. Can you also give me some money? I will need something to buy lunch later on. Don't you have any? Naruto shook his head. Have never needed it. My parents always gave me everything I wanted. Azumi shook her head. Tell me, she hesitated for a few moments before asking. Do you hate your parents? She dreaded a negative response. Certainly, she didn't want things to go that far. Kushina was a wonderful person. She was the one who instructed her to look after her son. It may not look like it, but it wasn't like she'd stopped caring about Naruto. There would never be a day that woman wouldn't care about her children. Never. Azumi believed so. Why do you think so? Well, the situation hasn't been ideal for you, Azumi said cautiously. I don't hate them. I could never. I'm disappointed. I'm bitter. I hate the current situation. I'm immensely displeased, but I don't hate them, Naruto said quietly. Despite everything, those people gave me everything before this. Despite everything, I still do depend on some lessons my mother gave me. However, he smiled sadly. I'm growing detached with all those memories. Azumi frowned. She really hoped things changed so soon. What about your sister? I have thought about it. If it wasn't for her, none of this would be happening. I would still be laughing with my mother, Naruto admitted that much. But no, I don't hate her. The rational part of me rationalizes that she is innocent and it isn't her fault. That may be true, but when was the last time you held her? He definitely had to try to learn taijutsu and a few things to complement it. He wanted to become jonin as quickly as he could. He understood once he reached that point he would be an adult and he would step into the light. He could do things of his own and become recognized as Uzumaki Naruto, not the Yandame's son. Starting today, he would learn what he could. He could push himself towards overshadowing the shadow that hides his existence. And with learning to fight, to be the best, he would never ever be humiliated again. Azumi frowned. He was ignoring her. I will go take your scrolls and the money, but I'm only lending it to you. I will be waiting, Naruto said after a few moments. A few days later. Hokage office. Minato looked up from his work as Fugaku walked up to him. He dropped everything knowing full well that whenever the man came to him, there was always some serious issues being dealt with. Minato always tried to handle it with care because he understood that the Uchiha offered much more to Kanoha than people were willing to admit. The Uchiha made much of Kanoha's military strength and Minato didn't underestimate that nor did he have any lingering suspicious thoughts about them. It wasn't just what the Uchiha offered that made the fourth Hokage act cautiously. It was also the fact that he was a Kage and he was supposed to make sure that everything in the village was run accordingly and without injustice. Some people were paranoid when it came to the Uchiha. They said the clan was all too powerful and some of their actions were suspicious. 
but Minato wasn't worried. He had an understanding with the Uchiha, and they had an understanding with him as the Hokage and someone who was on their side. You're early, that was the predictable startup he always says to the man when they have a meeting after their side talks. We have things to discuss, another predictable response from Fugaku. Minato waited until the man sat down before he responded. We always do. But at least we are making progress. That is something to be happy about, the Yandame said with a small smile. Fugaku didn't share the smile, he just nodded. He understood that was all. I heard your son is in the academy as well, the man said nothing further just to study the fourth Hokage's reaction to the news. He is. Surprised me, Minato said honestly. He never spoke about being a shinobi, and that made Minato's heart feel something like pain and disappointment in himself. If he had been there, Naruto would have spoken to him about it before joined up. Have you spoken to him about it? Minato shook his head. No, he said. He is hardly home these days. So am I. From what I hear, is hardly at the compound. Azumi says he is all right. Probably sneaks off for some privacy. Perhaps, Fugaku said. I thought you'd have someone watching over him. I assume he goes off to train. You see, on his first day, he was soundly beaten. Humiliated is the right word. By my son. Minato frowned at the thought. It must have been hard on him, he said. I don't give him time as I used to and with the fact that he is my son. The expectations are high. Fugaku nodded. If you have no problem, I can take him in. It will be good for the relationship between the Uchiha and the Uzumaki. Minato raised an eyebrow at this generous offer. Uchiha trained non-Uchiha? That's something. I appreciate it, but let me talk to him first, and as a father, I want to be the one to help him. I know it sounds selfish. But. I understand, Fugaku said quick to say before he changed the subject. Those senile old fools are still yapping about this and that. I thought you and the Sandame had things under control. That is all they can do. They have no power whatsoever. The Sandame is my only advisor and they no longer form the council. Their word carries little meaning, Minato said firmly. You wouldn't mind if I shut them up, would you? They are becoming annoying, Fugaku said clearly displeased. What about Danzo? His pests continue to lurk around the shadows and they keep sniffing around my clan. I won't permit it for too long. Minato sighed. Danzo was a troublesome subject. That man never listened to anything, but the Sandame insisted he keep him because of the current situation that Kanoha was finding itself within. Still, even when the man knew he was only being tolerated, it didn't stop him from moving. I'll talk to him, Minato said. You can do anything you want to anyone you find trespassing in your space. That's acceptable, no? Fugaku nodded. I can live with that, he said before standing up. We should head to the chambers. My fellow head clans must be waiting for us to start the meeting. Minato nodded and the two walked out of his office and walked towards the council chambers. There would be a meeting with the clan heads. Minato had abolished the previous council as he deemed it ineffective and lacking in many ways. The old people were senile and were making decisions that would lead to a rebellion. So he formed this group. He held most power as the Hokage and they couldn't usurp any decision he made. He was the Hokage after all and he was only obligated to listen to their voice. He could only choose which to take. But of course for better cooperation, Minato always made sure he listened to them. The Yandame Hokage took his seat at the center of the large table and greeted everyone with a small smile. I see no one is present again to represent the Uzumaki, Tsum said in a flat tone. It's quite disappointing. Kushina was supposed to be present, but she must have been held up by something, Minato said. But it's okay since I'm here. I will be their ears. 
That won't be necessary, Yoshino said walking into the chambers. She made herself comfortable, then. We have yet to fully agree on what to do with the QB, Hayashi said firmly, staring at the old woman. Not bothered by her stern mask. He could keep his own mask perfectly in shape as well. We have already had this discussion. My position has not changed and it will not change. Having another discussion will be a waste of time. Of which I do not have and will not sit to entertain, Yoshino responded flatly, staring into the eyes of the Hyuga. You're being unreasonable. Considering what happened, we can't afford to allow things to be run as they were before. We don't want another rampage happening, Hayashi argued. Are you doubting our work? Yoshino questioned in a low tone. I'm not but dash. I don't want to hear it. I have said it before. We will not trust the QB into the hands of Danzo. It is currently sealed and we can't extract it without causing the death of one of our clansmen, Yoshino looked around the table. Isn't the situation outside much more serious than this? Although he had his arguments, Hayashi frowned, knowing full that she was right. Fugaku nodded in agreement. I have to agree. The QB poses no threat at all. But Iwagakure and Kumo are real threats, and if we're not careful, they will be invading us. Combined they have four Jinchurikis, I'm not sure even we can survive that, especially with Kumo's numbers. There was silence as everyone got to think deep about what surrounded them. What have you been up to, Hokage-sama? Shikaku asked quietly. I spoke to the daimyo so that he can speak to his counterparts. Both the Rakage and Tsuchikage are unresponsive to requests for a meeting. I think as long as we keep it tight and nothing major happens, they will retreat. How long, though? It is becoming increasingly unsafe for our younger shinobi to leave the land of fire with those villages trying to provoke us, and Noichi offered his own thoughts. As long as we manage to control our shinobi, they won't do anything. We have two aces, Shikaku said holding out two fingers with his right hand. The Uchiha and the Uzumaki. With these two clans, they won't do anything reckless. Their bijus can be rendered ineffective. Even so, we must strengthen our ties with other villages to make sure we have support in case something happens, Chuza said. Minato nodded. I've been in contact with the Yandame Kazekage. They've recently had a bijou problem and I dispatched a team of sealers to deal with it. Since then, we have been on contact on how to strengthen our ties. He understands our situation. And I believe we can count on them if anything does happen. What about Kiri? It is still on lockdown. We don't really know what is happening, but Jiraiya has been trying to get some information, Minato said. Internal security is still sharp. We haven't had any incidents. Eyes were narrowed at the Uchiha clan head, who showed no emotion whatsoever. I still insist that the Byakugan is more suitable for the job they are doing. Those bloodthirsty brutes should be outside. The Hyuga should handle internal security. Fugaku snorted. I don't appreciate you calling members of my clan that, all-seeing, Hyuga. Minato sighed, rubbing his head as the two clan heads once again offered some entertainment to the others with their bickering. Really, Hayashi could be childish at times. Fugaku wasn't better either. No one wanted to be outdone by the other. Minato cleared his throat to get everything back under control. After deliberating, I have come to a decision. The Uchiha clan will not be moved into the outskirts of the village. They will continue to stay at their preferred land. I understand that some of you have your thoughts about the matter, but this is a decision I have taken for the best of Kanoha. Some of you may not like it, but please understand. If anything goes wrong, I will take responsibility. I have not made decisions that brought danger to the village and I will not start now. I hope you can trust my decision. Hayashi frowned. The Uchiha have much influence on what happens in the village, he said. They work with the Uzumaki, who also are in power. The Uzumaki were just fearsome. 
it was no wonder their former home were destroyed. It was no secret that they had seals that could switch off both the Sharingan and the Byakugan. Not mention they have seals all over the village. They could hold this village on a ransom at any day. But of course, that could just be the paranoia talking. You're welcome to take our jobs from us if you think you can do it, Hyuga Yoshino said. If I remember correctly, you all agreed that each village would offer a service to the village based on its strength and expertise. Up to so far, we have not abused our power, nor have we at any time made any unreasonable demands. We have worked to ensure the village is safe. Are you perhaps complaining because your so-called all-seeing eyes can't look past our walls? Hayashi just stared at the woman. He had nothing to retort with. Fugaku also spoke his mind. You people seem to forget that the Uchiha is a founding clan. We founded this village along with the Senju. We betrayed our ancestor and chose to trust Hashirama and this village. But ever since, we have been dealt with nothing but mistrust from both you and the villagers. What have we done to be placed in this situation? There was silence until it was broken by Shikaku. The Uchiha have always been powerful. That is without question. Just the thought of the Sharingan alone is enough to make enemies think otherwise. Perhaps the strict actions of the police force have made some villagers act hatefully, but you can change that by being a bit gentle in your duties you carry out so well, the Nara said calmly. I have no complaints as long as they don't start poking into my clan, Sum said, sending Fugaku a look. Let us just agree that what happens inside our clan compounds isn't anyone's business unless there is concrete proof of something treacherous, Yoshino suggested. Aren't you just saying that so that we stop questioning you about the fact that your clan has erected a barrier around your compound making it impossible for anyone to see what happens inside? Hayashi questioned. Must you always be difficult? Yoshino questioned. We wouldn't need to do that the villagers were not trying to sneak into our clan. We have already lost our clansmen because of the villagers' stupidity and anger, and we haven't demanded the culprits be hanged because we'd like to keep the peace. If you really want to see inside our compound, you can make an appointment and you'll be given a tour. Does that soothe you, Hayashi? Hokage Office as soon as Minato walked into the office, he found the Sandam waiting for him, sitting behind his desk. Upon seeing the active Hokage, the third tried to stand up to make way. I was just trying to feel the weight of this chair once more, having held it for so long, I have grown used it. Even when I'm at home, I find myself missing it, Saratobi said. Minato waved the old man off. Please, don't move, Sandame sama the Yandame said to his predecessor. He took the chair in front of the desk, knowing that the third wouldn't be here for far too long. You have really relinquished your seat amongst the clan heads, he added. Hiruzen merely smiled. I think I have grown too old be involved. It's best I let them do things on their own. Besides, I'm still active assisting you, he said quietly. Minato nodded. I think we managed to dodge a bullet, he said. The others agreed? Not all of them, but they will understand eventually. Hayashi just lets his rivalry get the better of him. If Shikaku was able to understand, then there should be no worries. Perhaps next time you can address them, Minato suggested. The Sandam shook his head. I will only get involved if you think you're failing or when they are taking things too far. For now, I will trust your leadership, the Sandame said with confidence that Minato will get things solved. And Fugaku? Thankful. I have earned his trust and he has earned mine. I think he is also trying to form a relationship between the Uzumaki and the Uchiha that goes beyond duties. It won't happen now. Yoshino doesn't like the Uchiha's. The Sandame chuckled lightly with a shake of his head. Imagine if we'd allowed them to be pushed over and backed against a corner. They have always been prideful people and such extreme measures Danzo was pushing for would have driven them to feel like they are being pushed away from the village they helped build. Minato nodded. Knowing them. 
they would have revolted to gain what they feel deserves to be theirs. I feel though that they will never be satisfied if one of them doesn't become Hokage. My thoughts as well, the third said. Well, let us see how things play out now. With this out of the way, Fugaku should focus on his duties as the commander of the military police force and ensuring the village is kept safe, Hiruzen paused for a moment as he changed the subjects. How is Naruto Kuen, anyway? I haven't been seeing him around here in months. Minato's deflated looks at it all. The Sandam Hokage stood up and walked up to Minato. He placed his right hand on Minato's right shoulder. Oh, Minato, the third started sadly. Don't neglect your son. You will find out that trying to regain what is lost is not easy, especially when it comes to family. Be there for you, son, talk to him, or you will regret it for the rest of your life. If Naruto forms a purpose and starts working towards it on his own, it won't be easy to get him back. You may never return things to what they were. There are people who will also try to get Naruto on their side, and they will help him when you aren't. Minato smiled sadly. I may be too late. Naruto went to the academy without talking to me, and I think goes all the way to avoid me. It's not too late, Minato Kuen. It's not too late. You can still form a friendship with your son, but if Naruto doesn't want to, don't force things. Just keep an eye on him and let him know that if there is ever anything he wants or if he is in trouble, you as his father will be there for him. Forest of Death Azumi walked towards a small water stream with a small bag on her right hand. As she looked on, she found Naruto floating above the stream of water. He was in a meditative pose, eyes closed hands clasped together just below his chin. There were small orbs of water floating around him. There was another Naruto just beside the stream, sitting his self-made chair made his chakra chains. He was also in a meditative position. There were small balls of crimson flames. Well, more like lava. Naruto called all these elemental chakra control excises. He couldn't do jutsu now. He simply said he needed to learn how to control the elements at his disposal to be able to execute ninjutsu perfectly. Learning ninjutsu would come after he was satisfied with his control over both wind and fire elements. Azumi said nothing to the clones, knowing that Naruto never actually had himself to the kind of excises unless the clones could execute it perfectly. She went across the small lake into a meeting of trees. Just past them, there was a small clearing that Naruto used as his training ground. The redhead only had his training pants on, there was a bandage covering his entire right hand along the shoulder. The redhead was standing atop of a chain that was tied to two trees, holding a kunai. Clones were hidden in the shadows of the trees, sending kunais, shurikens, and rocks towards him. Naruto had to block or dodge every projectile being sent towards him without falling. Mind you, he was standing atop of a chain without anything balance himself. There was no problem with being cut, but falling down was punishable by doing ten laps, while upside down. Naruto-sama, Azumi called out to get the redhead's attention. You do know that you don't have to call me, Naruto said, deflected a shuriken. While we are inside the barrier, this entire field is my field of vision, he then jumped down and walked towards the team. I know, but I'm trying to keep things normal, Azumi said, putting a towel down on the ground. She sat down and took out food from the bag she'd been holding. Breakfast is ready, she said with a smile. Thanks, Naruto said sitting down across Azumi. Should you be using that hand? It has yet to fully heal. I'm not doing anything dangerous that will delay the healing, Naruto said with a shrug as he dug in on his food. Were you able to get what I wanted? Azumi shook her head. No, she said before explaining. All styles in our library don't fit your specific fighting style and Kenjutsu isn't the sort you can learn on your own unless you're creating a new style. Why don't you ask your mother? It was hard enough getting her to tell me about the chakra chains, Naruto said with a frown on his face. 
he'd felt like he'd been emotionally blackmailing her. After everything she did for him, it left a bitter taste in his mouth. Naruto understood that the only reason she told him was because she thought she could patch up some things. Refusing him had the potential to drive him further away from the main house. The woman had even been willing to give him some pointers on the Uzumaki ability. Naruto had been grateful, but that didn't change anything. I will have to get my clones to work harder to be able to see the flaws of my style, Naruto said. That was it been doing all along. Scrolls helped along the way, and with thousands of hours of training from his clones, there was a lot of experience to see the faults. Were you able to get me a sword that's tough enough to put up a fight against those chains? Azumi shook her head. There is nothing, unless you're looking for a special sword, she said. Why do you need a sword that is just as tough as your chains? A normal sword will be fine, depending on how you use it. Normal won't complement the strength of the chains. That will create an imbalance that I cannot withstand, Naruto said firmly. He cocked his head, thinking. The chakra chains were created because of our special chakra. I have failed in trying to use my chakra to create a sword as strong as the chains. It seems to be an impossible task for me. I have come up with a way to get around it, though. What? When you leave here, Go find me the perfect blacksmith in the village. Go ask if it possible to create a chakra conducive blade with his strongest material and how much it will cost, Naruto said. Can you afford it? Mother gave me a lot of money. Make sure that old hag doesn't find out. I'm close to telling her to shut her crappy mouth and go bury herself with the Shodai's wife, Naruto said with a frown. That wouldn't end well for you, Azumi said. All the more reasons to push myself to my limits every day, Naruto said tiredly. My body doesn't do much work. The mind does the work. For the past six months, I have had to live more than ten lives. That technically means I have about five years worth of training and five years worth of experiences. Makes my mind twelve years old. And that has its consequences, Azumi pointed out, to which Naruto nodded. That reminds me, we have to stock up more medicine for your headaches. There is a bag under bed, in my room. The money is there, the redhead said. If I was the Jinchuriki and a full-blood Jinchuriki, I would have inherited the super healing you all possess. Oh well, this will just have to do. Azumi nodded and got up. When are you going to talk to the people who've poking at the barrier? Naruto shrugged. When I feel like it. You assured me not even the Byakugan could see through it, and unless they brutally attacked it, it wouldn't break. I will trust that and the nuisances can keep tossing and turning outside. Obliviousness has always been my hobby. Azumi sighed and took her bag I will return with the result of my search. If it is good news, you will be able to go there yourself to have sword created. Naruto was no longer listening by then. His mind was already focused on his much-needed training. In his current state, he had yet to muster everything despite the five years' worth of training. There were still a couple of months to ago, and by then, he would have learned something to attack with. Defense was one aspect he couldn't live without. The reason he pathetically lost to Itachi was because he couldn't defend. If he knew how to defend, he could delay defeat and perhaps turn it into a win. Being a loser sucked. Naruto wanted to be a winner in life. Losers were laughed at and ridiculed, but winners were celebrated. Uzumaki Naruto had felt the bitter taste of losing, and it hadn't been good. He didn't want to taste it again. This was why training was his life now. Outside the barrier. Azumi came to halt as soon as she came out of the barrier that surrounded Naruto's space. There was a menace in front of her. The fact that the man in front of her was persistently pursuing Naruto didn't please her. She was Naruto's guardian and she wasn't going to allow him to be dragged into this man's world. Still, she couldn't refute him face on. The man scared her. Well, not as much as a mad Naruto. The man still scared her nevertheless. 
What is Naruto really doing in there that he has to hide it? Danzo questioned, his lackeys flanking both his sides. Training, Azumi merely said. Obviously, Shimura Danzo said, his eyes piercing into Azumi's. We have not been able to enter this barrier. Do you mind telling us to go through it? I can't, Azumi said. We have no problem in making you do it, Danzo said. There are a lot of dangerous animals in this forest that can make a person disappear. There is a warning that says enter at your own risk. The man just threatened to kill her. Azumi wanted to run back and tell Naruto. But she didn't. She stood her ground. The man was indeed a menace. Everyone was indeed right about him. She had been right not to tell Naruto about his visits to this site. Let me rephrase. Even if I tell you, it wouldn't make any difference. The barrier is designed so that only Naruto-sama and I can pass through it. Danzo nodded. I thought of that possibility. I have spoken to Naruto twice and each time he doesn't appear to hear me. I wonder, if I held on you for a moment, would he listen and do what I say? Azumi did a Naruto smile. She didn't quite pull it off but it was close and got the message through. You don't understand him, do you? Even if you hold me hostage, Naruto won't listen to you. He will only listen to you when he feels like it. I doubt he even cares that much about me to allow himself to be put into a losing position to save me. We won't know that until we try, now won't we? Danzo said calmly. Azumi nodded. Her heart was beating furiously. She thought she was even going to have a heart attack. Even so, she held out her hands, surrendering. Danzo nodded to his agents who quickly went up to apprehend Izumi. She was brought before the Warhawk and who ordered her to call the young Uzumaki. Izumi didn't object, she clasped her hands together and the barrier glowed twice. So you're the one who created this thing, Danzo said. You Uzumaki are truly blessed when it comes to Fuinjutsu. It doesn't seem like Naruto is blessed as the rest of you, though. Azumi didn't respond. A minute later, Naruto stepped out of the barrier. Oh, Azumi, you're still here, the redhead said with his beloved expression masking his face. He tilted his head to the right as his mask turned to Danzo. Danzo-san, what can I do for you? Will you not reconsider my offer? I cannot respond to that as I have not heard your offer. Please be free to tell me about it on a good day. I'm currently busy right now, Naruto said still smiling. He pointed at Izumi. If she did something bad, take her to my mother or the Hokage. They are the ones responsible for her. I'm just a kid. I can't do much and if anybody asks, I didn't see anything. Having said that, the redhead turned around to leave, but before he could step into the barrier, one of Danzo's agents flashed in front of him. Danzo-sama is not yet done. That girl will die if you don't cooperate. Naruto's smile twitched, turning into a somewhat sinister smile. His eyes partially opened, coldness just oozing out freely. I'd be sad, but I'd get over it. Besides, if anything happens to her, you'll all be hunted down. I'm sure mother wouldn't mind ripping every one of you apart with her indestructible chakra chains, he turned to Izumi. You don't have to return anymore. Go home. I will send a clone to do what I'd requested, Naruto then bowed. Gentlemen, on your way back, make sure the super umbu who watches me is taking nap. The redhead disappeared in a puff of smoke. Danzo blinked, that had been a clone? Earlier at the academy, Naruto strolled through the bright passages of the Shinobi Academy that had become so familiar to him that he could walk with his eyes closed. This was his daily routine, walking through the passages as he went in and out of the Shinobi Academy. It was a chore, but he still had to do it. If it was permitted, he'd have Izumi attend his classes for him. It was not enough that a clone was doing it, he still had to experience it when the clone dispels. 
he tried by all means to keep that air of nobility he had been forced to adopt in front of other children by that old hag who demanded that he act like the heir of the prestigious Uzumaki clan and the son of the Yandame Hokage, instead of orphan. That damn old hag. It has been about six months since he first stepped into the gates of this place so that he could change and step outside the shadow of his father so that he could make a story of his own, be a light that wouldn't be ignored by anyone. But of course by light Naruto didn't mean he would be showering every human with kindness and purity as if he was an angel of the good God. He had his own agenda and he had come to believe that even if there was a God, that God didn't like him very much. How many times had he prayed? There was not even a single response to his prayers, not a even damn sign. Naruto grew tired of doing so. The thought that there might be a God had disappeared in his head. And so Naruto had looked up with his beloved mask and given the god, who may or may not exist, his middle finger. He could do everything with his army of clones. Uzumaki Naruto didn't care for the kindness of a god. Yo, Naruto, a boy called from the behind. When you played the death card to Academy children, it wasn't nice. You only invited resentment and contempt. Naruto had received that during his first three months because he'd been ignoring them as he didn't want to talk to them or hear what they wanted to say to him. It was bound to be just nonsense and child talk. He had learned. Kids were quick to hate. No sooner than later he started having mobs chasing after for trying to act cool and like the tough guy because he had improved since his embarrassment on the first day at the academy. Naruto realized that being ignorant hadn't been worth the trouble. And so, he chose to play the other way around. Smile and talk to whoever called him. But of course, that didn't mean he listened to every crap being fed to his ears. Hello, he would have said the boy's name if he knew it. Seriously, Naruto hadn't known the name of his teacher for the first two months since no one called by that name. It was always Sensei. And Naruto hadn't bothered asking because he it was not a necessity. He was only keeping appearances at the academy to keep his grades and avoid suspension. Did you do your homework? The boy smiled, putting his right hand over Naruto's shoulder. If only he saw the eyes that looked at him the moment he did so, he would have just stopped talking and walked towards the class. Now, why would I want to do that when I can get to copy yours? That will depend on whether I want to give it to you or not or whether I have written it. Naruto responded, matching the boy's smile. Ah, come on now, Naruto. I thought we were friends. Naruto took the hand that was hanging over his right shoulder. He did so carefully as if he was picking up dirt. Maybe. But I didn't bother writing because it doesn't reflect on my year mark. But of course, if you try to force things out, I can always write the wrong answers for you, the redhead said, smiling. You have to go home using a different route, the boy said. Or I'll just call the umbu that watches over me to handle any threats, Naruto said and walked away from the boy. Sometimes he gave in, sometimes he didn't. He worked it like that. Although having mobs run after him was bothersome, bending over wasn't his style. He was not on the losing side after all and his mother would be disappointed to know that he didn't face bullies head on. Naruto entered the class, immediately put on a charming smile. The girls waiting for Uzumaki-sama entered an imaginary world upon seeing the killer smile. Hello ladies, Naruto said walking by. The moment he passed the girls, he lost his smile and walked up towards his seat. Behind the redhead, words like, so beautiful, so cool. Naruto had realized that the secret to dealings with fangirls wasn't through ignoring them. Hell, even if you told them to go away, they would still come back. They had the same attitude as him, hearing only what was convenient to them. Faced with that, Naruto came up with the perfect strategy, smile at them and talk to them. That would just melt their little hearts and would be too satisfied to follow him. Once Naruto was on his seat, he turned off his ears and looked outside the window. The usual. Danzo had been right. The academy couldn't teach him anything. 
it was basically worthless. Well, in terms of training. For the name of Uzumaki Naruto, it wasn't useless. The kids were telling their beloved parents about how awesome and how cool the Yandame's son was. It was his own efforts that made them talk. But it didn't please Naruto that they still saw the Yandame in his work. It infuriated him even. After all that he had put in, they still saw the shadow of Minato Namikaze, not Uzumaki Naruto. The teacher was always like, as expected of Yandame Sama's son. If Naruto really paid attention to class, he would have already told the man go suck up to the Yandame Hokage and leave him alone. Good morning, everyone, the sensei said as he walked into the class. There was a chorus greeting to the man. Did everyone write their math homework? Yes, sensei. The entire class, well, it seemed that everyone had said so. The man smiled. It was somewhat of a devious smile. Is there anyone who didn't do their homework? No hand was raised. The man looked at Naruto and frowned. He looked at his beautiful class for a moment to get a happy memory. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto didn't look. There were words flowing inside his head in this form. There was only one competition in the class, and that was Uchiha Itachi. He was competition because he was the only who equaled his efforts. It wasn't that Naruto competed with the Uchiha. He didn't like getting involved in competition he didn't know he was going to win or not. If the result was obvious, he would have partaken in it already. The sensei didn't bother calling Naruto again. Takata, will you hit Naruto for me? The man asked nicely. When a punch was thrown at Naruto, the redhead caught it with his right hand and turned around smiling. What is wrong, classmate San? He simply didn't know the name of the person in front of him. We have your attention now, your highness, the sensei said sarcastically. Really, he couldn't understand it. The boy was only rivaled by Itachi when it came to academics, but the boy's focus in class was non-existent. He completely ignored everything that went around and didn't even participate. He only answered when he was asked, and sometimes he wasn't even afraid to say. I wasn't listening. Okay, now that I have everyone's attention, this is what is going to happen. The sensei's smile grew slightly. Bring out your homework books and come to the door along with your books. Those who have done their homework will go to the training grounds with me, and those who did not will remain in class doing their homework. There was joy and complete shatter of some dreams when those words came out. Not fair, sensei, someone cried. What are you talking about? The man responded innocently. I asked if everyone had written their homework, and everyone said they'd written. You shouldn't complain unless you were lying when you said you'd written, he paused for a moment clasping his hands. Now my beloved students follow me. This was the part that Naruto could follow some fresh air outside rather than being stuck in a pointless class that was nothing more than just time consuming. How Naruto wished he could be allowed to graduate yesterday so that wouldn't have to keep appearances in this manner. It was almost like torture. Oh well, it was not like it was only him suffering, the real him would suffer as well when he dispelled. Hey, Naruto, you don't happen to have my homework, do you? Naruto didn't look. He had his hands inside his pockets, going down the front of the class, following other students. He could get some reading done. A part of his job wasn't just to keep appearances, but to also get some reading done as well. It wouldn't be good to be ignorant of even the knowledge that would determine whether he passed the theory tests or not. Oh, come on. You don't even care about this? Why don't you just let me go and you'll remain here, alone, taking a nap or something? Training ground. The place had been his beloved holy ground. It was where he got his honor back. It was the place that made it possible for him to walk around the academy with his head held high without having to hear the snickers and snorts about his dismissal performance if you can call it a performance against Uchiha Itachi. But then again, this was the place that had humiliated him and played ball with his pride. 
After months of determination and brutal work, he had regained what he'd lost by improving in the field. He'd worked hard to beat other kids in his class and improve the kunai throwing techniques and other things. His grades in class made it possible for him to be admired once again. The people who'd called him lame and a disappointment were now saying perhaps he'd lost because Itachi had caught him off guard. That wasn't true, but Naruto didn't go his way to correct them. They could think what they wanted. He didn't support it. He ignored the rumors and didn't delude himself into thinking that perhaps Itachi had just caught him off guard. Naruto, Itachi, would you too like to do an exhibition match before we start teaching those still lagging behind in the same taijutsu we have been doing since the year begun, the sensei said, looking at a few faces in particular. Itachi looked at Naruto. He didn't have a problem with it. But Naruto always turned down the chance to battle him. It made Itachi curious. Perhaps the loss had been too much for him and he couldn't face him again. Well, that had been the first thought, but Itachi came to realize that the redhead had other reasons of which he couldn't figure out. Naruto held out both his hands in a defensive manner. I'd rather not, the redhead said with a smile. You can select someone else. There are other students who are good. Besides, Itachi and I aren't the only ones who've mastered the style. Well, he was right about that. There were students who had mastered the academy taijutsu, but the two were just above average. It would be something nice to have them fight, just so that other students could see what our real fight was, but Naruto always turned the opportunity down and he couldn't force him to do it. He couldn't use any cheap tricks to get the redhead to do it and Itachi wasn't the type to goad someone into battle. If he had the kind of heart, he would have done it already. But the sensei valued his morals and his code of conduct as a teacher and role model to his students. Surely if he did nasty tricks, the others would copy as well. Well, you're right about that, but are you sure? This will help you test how far you've come and if you can beat Itachi, the sensei offered sweetly. Naruto, come on. Show us what you got. If you don't do this, there won't be the undisputed number one. Yet. Yeah. Naruto still refused to do it. While the idea is appealing, I'm not that glory seeking to be looking for number one. I'm fine with being second best. More words being just thrown out, Itachi thought. It was clear that the redhead didn't like being second best. He knew for certain he didn't even like being in his father's shadows. He would seek to prove himself. Then this presented the best chance to prove that he could be as good as his father when he was still at the academy, Naruto didn't follow that thought. Why? While he couldn't mask his disappointment, the sensei sighed and looked at the silent Uchiha. He'd asked the Uchiha's opinion about Naruto's continued refusal to fight him again. It was just a sparring session and the sensei was sure that Naruto didn't have any grudge against the Uchiha and despite being the best two students, there wasn't some sort of a rivalry between the two. They just acknowledged each other and it ended there. Doesn't it bother you, Itachi Kuen? The Uchiha shook his head. I have no complaints. If Naruto doesn't too, it's fine, he said quietly. Not helping, the sensei thought. Okay, he said looking back at his class. Itachi, Naruto, I'm leaving you in charge of the class. No kunais or shurikens unless you're being supervised. Those who are still lagging behind can practice now. I'm going back to class to check if those we left are doing their work. But if I return and find you goofing around, I will make you write tests every day, next week. That said, the man smiled and walked away. By now, Naruto was already under a tree, leaning against the tree's trunk. He then looked up as someone came up to him. The redhead smiled and turned to the person. If it had been anybody, he would have simply continued reading his book. Itachi-san? Itachi just stared at Naruto for a moment. Do you mind walking out of the academy with me, today? He'd said it just like that. Naruto didn't seem surprised by. In fact, 
The only noticeable reaction from the redhead was a widened smile. I don't mind, but I have plans today, Naruto said. Well, he couldn't actually say it wasn't his decision to make. The boss had to make that decision himself. But, tomorrow will be fine. Tomorrow then, Itachi said. He stood there for a moment before settling down beside Naruto. What a dash. Itachi-san, come help here. The Uchiha sighed. Obviously, he didn't want to do it. But their sensei had commissioned him to supervise the other students. It was a responsibility. He would just have to follow through. Besides, they would just cut themselves if left alone. You're going to avoid your responsibility, again. Itachi said to Naruto. Naruto turned to his book. Yes. If you call babysitting them a responsibility one has to take seriously. Itachi shook his head and walked away. Later that day. Uchiha compound. Itachi was sitting at the back of his house, holding his beloved little brother. Oh, how he loved the brother of his. He couldn't wait for the days to move ahead so that he could teach the boy the things their father taught him. Fugaku always taught him whatever he wished to be taught. If he said he wanted to be taught jutsu, the man wouldn't say yes or no. The answer was always follow me. Perhaps it was because he knew that he would learn whatever that he was taught. Teaching him wasn't a waste of time. There was also the fact that being heir of the Uchiha clan and the acclaimed genius prodigy, he had his standards to uphold. His father would want him to continue doing great things so to improve the village's perception of their clan. Itachi had no problems with it. It benefited both his people and Kanoha. Who wouldn't be satisfied with that deal? Little Sasuke wouldn't have taken much on his shoulders with him doing most things, and that made Itachi happy. Anything for his little brother. The Uchiha shut off his thoughts as his father came up to him. The man settled down beside him before speaking. I thought you'd be at the training ground, Fugaku said. That was what his son usually did anyway. I wanted to spend some time with Sasuke, Itachi replied quietly, smiling slightly at his little brother. Naruto had a younger sister. He wondered if the redhead shared a relationship similar to the one he has with his younger brother. He didn't know everything going on in Naruto's life, but he was curious. It was also hard to know as the Uzumaki were incredibly good at keeping things to themselves. But Itachi had never heard the redhead say anything about his sister. Not once. Even when someone asked. His response was usually a shrug or just perfect. Fugaku nodded, accepting Itachi's response. How was the academy today? Interesting, Itachi said. Well, that really did sum it up. I spoke to Naruto and asked if we could take a walk together. He said tomorrow would be fine with a smile. Took you long enough, Fugaku said. I wish you'd grow acquainted with him. Given his development and his status, he will be good for you. And I want someone in the inside to help our clan out of the situation we are in. Itachi looked at his father for a moment. I thought everything was fine with the Hokage's decision to let us keep this land and still remain Kanoha's security. That is just a step towards the right direction and it has soothed many of us. As it stands, we are more equally or more in standing with other clans, but we remain less loved by the villagers. Fugaku said, taking a thoughtful look. The same can be said about the Uzumaki. Well, they have it worse, but don't seem to be too mindful about it. Unsurprising, they've always been a peaceful clan. Things can change in time, Itachi said. Though he liked the thought of the Uzumaki being peaceful, despite the fact that Naruto was nothing compared to peace. Becoming friends with Naruto will be a little difficult. I don't really understand him. He's complicated. Fugaku chuckled lightly. Not really, he said. People can bond by different means, Itachi. Some shinobi bond through a clash of swords, some through the shared ideals. Minato and I different people. Our ideals differ, yet we get along. 
Do you know why? Fugaku paused for a moment before answering his own question. Understanding. Try to get to know him and you'll find out. Itachi nodded. Otosama, why does Naruto not compete with me? He goes his way to avoid even sparring with me when our sensei requests of it. I know he isn't afraid of me, and given his miraculous improvement, he can be match for me. Fugaku smiled. Because he uses the same technique you do Shadow Clone, the Uchiha hit said. That is one reason. I also believe that young Naruto doesn't compete with you because his objective isn't being better than you. There is a bigger shadow than yours that he is glaring at. It is also possible that he doesn't engage in battles he doesn't know he will win or not. Itachi looked thoughtful for a moment before nodding slightly. That makes sense, but I guess I will have to ask him tomorrow. Perhaps we can become training partners, the Uchiha said. How frequent does he use shadow clones? Fugaku smiled every day, he said. From morning till evening. But you never know what he is actually training, but he trains every day. Only goes home to sleep. A few days ago, he was taken to the hospital with severe burns on his right hand. We handled his case, and he requested that his father does not know. Why? I don't know, Fugaku said. He had an idea, but Itachi could work things out on his own. His mother was a Jinchuriki of the Kyubi when she was carrying him. I think it may have had some influence on him because the flames that burned him were not normal flames. That's the only thing I know that leads to believe that he is really training himself to his limits and if you're not careful, he will surpass you. I won't let that happen. Good, Fugaku said. When you have become acquainted with Naruto, invite him over to the compound so that I can talk to him. The reason he burned himself is because he doesn't have someone experienced to supervise his training. Minato had said he wanted to speak to the redhead first, but it has been months and Fugaku wasn't going to wait for the Hokage to gather his courage to speak to his son. An opportunity was there, and it would be foolish of him to just let it pass. One like this would never appear once again. Fugaku stood up. I'll return late. I have work to do at Military Police HQ. Itachi understood he was being told to inform his mother should she ask why his father was returning late. Buzumaki Compound You've certainly taken a liking to your freedom, Yoshino said, walking over to Naruto who was sitting inside his little kitchen, eating his dinner alone. He'd just returned to the house after another day of work in the forest of death. Freedom is meant to be enjoyed, Naruto simply said. Really, he was feeling much older than he was. Call it the consequences of using a number of clones every day from morning till evening, only taking breaks to recover his chakra through meditation. Or is it perhaps wrong to enjoy this illusion? You're growing. That's good, Yoshino said, not bothering to offer Naruto a response to his question. Don't go to the academy tomorrow. Why? Although Naruto had nothing better to do at the academy and only his clone attended the classes, he wouldn't simply wish just to do so because the old hag was saying so. Oh, questioning me now, are we? Naruto didn't respond to that. He just continued to eat his meal as if the old hag hadn't said anything. The best choice with dealing with her wasn't to respond to anything she said. He was willing to play the ignorant card on her, so long as he could get away with it. The Hugas will be here tomorrow to conduct business. You will be with your mother to negotiate whatever they want to negotiate with her. This will be part of your training on how to handle diplomatic missions. Did my mother request my presence? We're something noble and don't embarrass the clan in front of those damn Hugas, Yoshino said sternly. Do you understand me? Naruto was tempted to ignore the old hag as she had ignored him. But he wanted her to get away from his presence so that he could eat without troubles. I will be at my best behavior, Obasan, the redhead said with a smile. Yoshino didn't respond. She merely turned around and tried to leave but halted when Naruto spoke. Remind me again, 
For me to become clan head, I'll either have to become Jonan or reach the age of 18, correct? Those are my only terms, and nothing's left behind. As far as I know, Yoshino said with a shrug. Don't think there will be a shortcut to it. You can't do anything as you are. It will take more years or being brutalized by Danzo for you to become Jonin quickly. But of course, get anywhere near that man and you'll lose all your privileges. Naruto looked at the senile old woman with a smile. If you keep using that against me so cheaply, it will lose value quickly, he said. Besides, being head clan wasn't his top agenda. If he became Jonin, he would be free to do as he pleases without Yoshino sticking her nose into everything he did. I wouldn't be so sure about boy, Yoshino said sternly before walking away from Naruto. Azumi walked into the room and down across Naruto's small table. Naruto looked at her for a moment before looking at his food as he continued to eat in a leisurely pace. Does the old hag scare you that much that you don't want to cross paths with her? She can brutal sometimes, Azumi said quietly. She mostly blames me on your absence and lack of manners as I am your guardian. So I'd rather avoid her when I can. Naruto nodded. Everyone would be most happy if the death god who forgot to take her soul remembers her, the redhead said, earning a look from Azumi, but he just shrugged. Are you well? Azumi nodded. But not thanks to you, Naruto-sama. Eh, he wouldn't have hurt you. He was just testing things. If he'd done anything, then preparations for his execution would have been in order, Naruto said. He then smiled warmly. But I'm glad you're okay. I was afraid you'd be shaken. If you really cared, you'd have made sure I was okay. Don't expect too much of me, Izumi-chan. Besides, if I'd showed I cared, he wouldn't have hesitated to do it again to get what he wants from me. The redhead paused for a moment. I also refuse to believe that you were that defenseless. Our clan may not be made of powerful shinobi, but killing us isn't easy and we are not defenseless, despite appearances. Azumi nodded. She knew that well. I didn't make things difficult because I knew you'd be that way. A thought did slip that perhaps you'd try to fight. That would have put you in danger and I would have fought. Getting into a fight you know you can't win is suicidal. I know I'm powerless, that's why I hide behind the mask. That's why I burn myself in training. I wish to change that, the redhead then smiled. When we have power, we will be able to look down on those who dare try to assert themselves on us. In any case, you don't have to come to me anymore. I will use other means to feed myself. Azumi nodded. Why aren't you shaken, though? Was it a small thing? Not at all. You were basically held for a ransom. I just made it look as if you were worth nothing to me, yet harming you would result in great danger. That man isn't rumored to be stupid. I knew he'd do the right thing. Naruto explained lightly. I won't have training tomorrow. I will take the chance to stock my weapons and get a sword made as well as rest my body, saying that, Naruto stood up, leaving his plate on the table. Really, Naruto-sama? Azumi said. Naruto had already turned away. There was something in at the entrance that had him focused, his father. The man was smiling nervously as if he was trying to propose to a girl he liked. Really, he looked almost ready to fidget when the eyes of Uzumaki Naruto met with his. Otu-san. Naruto said, smiling at the Yandame Hokage. Minato just continued with his nervous smile before speaking. Naruto, he trailed off, organizing his thoughts. How was day? Eventful, the redhead said. Okay. Silence struck again as Naruto just kept smiling at his father, waiting for him to say whatever it was that he wanted to say. I wanted to talk to you. But we will talk tomorrow after the meeting with the Hyuga. It was said a bit too quickly, but Naruto heard every word. The redhead nodded and looked back at Azumi with a different smile. Good night, Azumi-chan. Having said that, the redhead walked past his father. 
After Naruto left, Minato let loose of a long breath he didn't know he was even holding. He then looked at Izumi. How is he? Good. He is doing well in the academy. But you must know that already, Izumi said. Well, he was the Hokage after all, and it was he who controlled that academy. No doubt the sensei is reported to him. Minato smiled weakly. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he seems well. Thank you for everything. I haven't been much of a parent, but he has you. I'm just filling my responsibility, Yandem sama as Umi said, just to play down her role. But she bit her lip when her words stung the Hokage. He also had a responsibility towards his son, and he had been failing to deliver. Minato tried to get out of the situation by chuckling, awkwardly. At least some of you S are, he said before saying thanks once more and walked away from the room. The following day. What can you do on your own, Naruto-sama? Azumi asked, delicately buttoning the noble cloak Naruto was wearing. Really, he couldn't even put on the damn thing nicely on his own. She had to do it for him. There were a few more things that he should be able to do for himself, but Azumi had to do it for him. Train, eat, bath, Naruto gave a list, though not too bothered by the question to even give it much of his thoughts. There were more pressing matters to deal with today. He was going to be suffocated sitting in the same space as the expressionless Hugas. He hated the formalities that he would be forced to follow. Then again, his mother wasn't good at those either. At least there would be no that old hag to sulk out the living joy out of his lungs. That old woman was really something else. Naruto found himself often wondering when she would kick the bucket. Life would be good if she did so. When are you going to learn to other things yourself? What happens when you're alone? You can't live on your own because you can't even make the simplest of meals that other kids your age can do. Naruto waved his right hand. I do not need to worry about mundane things when you can do them. You're the guardian. I have to focus on the important things. As Umi stared, he'd said it like that. He said her work was mundane. How could he say it with a straight face and still just expect her to take it? Thinking of it, Azumi realized he probably didn't even care about her thoughts on that matter. He'd merely stated a fact in his opinion and that would stick. She sighed, my work is very important, she stressed. There, you look like a fine heir of the Uzumaki clan. I don't look like, I am the heir of the Uzumaki clan, Naruto corrected, though he didn't sound too pleased about it. He seemed to view it as a burden more than anything. But Azumi wasn't going to comment on that. I'm all done, Azumi said stepping aside. Naruto looked at himself in the mirror. What's left? A smile? He smiled at himself. Perfect, he said. Sometimes I worry about your sanity, Azumi said shaking her head. Who did that kind of thing? He was looking at his weird smile in the mirror and was calling it perfect. I will not see you until later. Have my reading materials prepared before I get back, Naruto said walking away from Azumi. Azumi knew what Naruto said translated to that even if she does see him before he leaves the compound, he wasn't going to talk to her. She was going to be ignored. He was very good at pretending as if other people didn't exist or entering his own little world where it was just him dancing with his own unpleasant thoughts. Naruto left his room and walked towards the main living room. He was surprised to see both his parents waiting for him. It was not evident on his expression nevertheless. The redhead merely smiled at his parents as he greeted them. Okasan, Tusan, the redhead said. Hey, Naruto, Minato said with a nervous smile. You look nice. Did Izumi pick that for you? When Naruto nodded, Minato cut a short laugh. We probably spoiled you a little too much. Then again, you were our joy. Still are, the Yandame Hokage was quick to correct himself. Naruto acted as if he hadn't heard the last statement from his father. He didn't respond to it. 
I wasn't expecting you to be present for the meeting. No more work overload these days? There is still work. This is part of work, Minato managed to say, feeling a bit unnerved by the look Naruto was giving him. It wasn't that of a scary face. It was a smile. But Minato knew there was nothing to smile about. Naruto shouldn't be smiling at him, but yet he was. I see. Then you're acting as the Yandame Hokage, right now, Naruto said before walking past both his parents. I'll be outside. Once Naruto was out of sight, Minato turned to his wife. Well, that was disappointing. But not as bad as I expected it to go. What did you expect? Him to ignore me he does that so well, Minato said with a sad smile. I'm happy that he is still able to talk. I did manage to make some time to be able to talk to him after the meeting. Kushina returned the sad smile. As long as Yoshino doesn't show up, everything should be fine. We will be able to talk to our son. I really do miss my son Minato. I want to have him in our lives once again. Minato pulled Kushina closer to him. We will try, Kushina, he said. Does Naruto not get along with Yoshino? Not at all, Kushina said with a shake of her head. You know how hard Yoshino is and Naruto likes things his way. He doesn't like being bossed around. I have seen how he smiles at her. It's unhealthy. Perhaps we should talk to her about backing off slightly from him, Minato suggested. He doubted that conversation would go so well, though. That woman was seriously stubborn and Minato didn't like dealing with her. No need, Kushina said. From what I was able to gather, she has been staying away from him. She only goes to him when she has to. What makes it even so possible is that Naruto is hardly home these days. This has become a motel for him. Before Minato could respond, Naruto walked back into the room. They said the Hugas have arrived, he said. Minato nodded, come here, he said to Naruto. The redhead looked at his father questionably for a moment before obliging. The man touched his right shoulder and the three disappeared in a flash of yellow. They appeared at the clan gates where Hayashi and an old man were waiting for them. Kushina took the lead. Welcome to the Uzumaki compound, Hayashi-san, she only greeted the clan head respectfully. I'm sure you know our son, she added pointing at Naruto. Hayashi didn't respond to the smile Kushina was giving him, his expression remained blank as he spoke. Yes, I'm quite aware of him. I have been hearing good reports about him from one my own, who is in a class with him. Naruto didn't hide his surprise at hearing those words. Not that Hayashi heard that he was doing rather well in the academy, but that there was a Hyuga in his class. For months he's been in that class, and he honestly didn't know someone from the Hyuga clan was his classmate. Why the surprise, the old man beside Hayashi asked as the five made their way into the clan compound. Naruto smiled pleasantly as he responded. This is the first time I hear that there is a Hyuga in my class. I hadn't noticed, Hayashi seemed offended by that, but Naruto just added, not sounding very apologetic. But then again, I didn't know my sensei's name until just recently. He wanted to add something, but he stopped figuring it would only make the Hyuga mad. Hayashi faced the front. He hadn't liked how Naruto spoke. For someone who has garnered much attention as Uchiha Itachi, your attitude is disappointing. I'd expected you to know that. Ignorance is truly bliss to the young ones. Naruto actually nodded in agreement. Well said, he said. Perhaps my attitude is disappointing. I will apologize for that. I have a habit of ignoring trivial things and things that I have no use in knowing, he said that with his smile. Minato had to hold himself from laughing. Kids. It was obvious Naruto had merely said that because Hayashi had said Naruto was disappointing. It was amusing just to see Hayashi trying hard to make sure his mask didn't slip to that blow from his son. Nothing further was said as Hayashi didn't want to end up arguing with a child. 
It was even worse since both parents didn't seem like they were going to stop their son from talking to him in such a disrespectful manner. No child had ever spoken to him like that. It was disrespectful, but he kept his mouth shut because he'd come here for help and he was the one who started it, though he wouldn't admit that to anyone. The rest of the walk towards the main house was a silent one. Everyone was wrapped up in their thoughts with the Hugas taking their time to look around the compound. It was a rare sight. No one outside the compound could actually see what was going on inside. The place appeared to be just like a forest because of the Jinjutsu-infused seal that surrounded the compound. The group made it towards the reception room, the room designed specifically for things such as this. Kushina sat at a small podium, uncomfortable. She didn't like sitting like this, but the others were used to this kind of thing since they regularly did it. Hayashi and his companions sat facing the Uzumaki woman with Minato and Naruto sitting on the sides, both facing each other. As part of his training and being that he is the heir of the clan, Naruto will only observe. He won't be saying anything, Kushina said quietly. The Hokage is here as per your request that he be a witness. Hayashi nodded and looked at Minato. I hope you will be remaining neutral and fair. Even though this might affect the future of your son, the Hyuga clan head said. Of course, Minato said with a nod. I will appreciate it, Hayashi said. There are a lot of things that have to be discussed and I truly hope that we will come to an agreement in some of them. I'm willing to comprise if that is needed for an agreement to be reached, the man paused for a moment. I have two questions before we can get to that. How deep is your relationship with the Uchiha and why is your library so warded with seals? I cannot answer the first, Kushina said, but the second is because it's our library and we have to protect it. Our library has things that you cannot even find in the village's library or anywhere else. It is our treasure. That was how far Naruto listened. Really, he could have simply gone to his training ground and learned some things. Oh wait. He didn't send a clone to do anything because he wanted to rest. Living so many lives was making his mind feel old. Really, he had so many experiences it now felt like he had so many years under his belt. He had other business to handle today. He needed to get his weapons created and there was a meeting with Itachi. His clone had said today, so he would have to go to the academy and meet the Uchiha. Perhaps he could gain something by associating with the Uchiha. Naruto. The redhead looked at his mother. There was no way he could ignore the chilling voice that was calling him. She must have noticed that he wasn't listening to everything. As he looked up to his mother, Naruto found the woman standing, her hands on her hips, staring at him. Naruto smiled, yes mother? That smile once again. Kushina steeled her nerves and spoke. Go wait for us in the main living room. We are just going to see Hayashi-san out. Naruto nodded. He hadn't heard anything that was being said when the negotiations were proceeding. Ah, uh, ignorance was truly bliss. He wasn't even going to bother trying to figure out what was being said. If there was anything, his mother would deal with it. As Naruto sat down on the couch in the main living room, what was happening fully registered in his head, his parents were going to talk to him. It was perhaps the first time in months that both were going to sit with him. Naruto wasn't excited by it. It made him frown because he wasn't really looking forward to it. Time seemed to have just run fast as his parents had been quick to return. Perhaps Minato had just teleported both him and his mother back to the house. Naruto comforted himself in those thoughts as he looked at both his parents who sat across him, facing him. All of a the sudden, there was an air of nervousness. It was disturbing, and it really suffocated Naruto. He really didn't like being in this kind of atmosphere. Karen-chan asleep, the redhead started quietly. Kushina shook her head. She is with Izumi. I hope it doesn't end up being her job. I'm not sure I want to learn to know another guardian, Naruto said a bit too innocently. Kushina was quick to raise both her hands. Of course not. Azumi will always be there for you. 
She is yours alone. Glad to know, Naruto said and then gave both his parents a look that clearly said, so? Minato looked at Kushina for a moment before looking back at Naruto. We haven't really been parents to you. We want to change that. We want to make it up to you. But we first want to know, do you resent us? No, Naruto said with a shake of his head. I'm disappointed. Bitterly disappointed. Immensely disappointed, but I do not resent you, that said, the redhead stood up. But as he tried to leave, Kushina grabbed him. She gave him a pleading look. She was begging him to stay. It was the first time he was seeing her make such a look, but Naruto didn't want to stay. But he had an alternative that would suit them both. I will join you for dinner tonight, he said with a smile, then tilted his head to the side. As long as you show up, both parents flinched when those words left his lips. Well, enjoy the rest of the day, mother, father, Naruto walked away. Kushina turned to Minato. If we mess up this time, we won't get another chance, she said. Minato nodded. I will be sure to return in time before dinner so we can prepare it together, the Yandame Hokage said. I got to return to work. See you later, with that said, he disappeared in a flash of yellow. With Naruto. After leaving the Uzumaki compound, Naruto entered the village hidden in leaves. Really, being inside the compound did feel as if one was inside another village. Well, it was better that way. They were hidden from the rest of the villagers and things were a lot quieter unlike with how noisy the streets could be. The obvious cloak of invisibility that Naruto wore as he made his way through the streets wasn't forgotten to his mind. He wasn't ignoring things. He was being attentive, this one time. He did have his moments, but that was beside the point. It was obvious that he still needed to do more than he was doing for the cloak to leave his shoulders. He needed more than what he was doing. He had to do more to be able to leave the shadow of his father. Even so, Naruto wasn't going to compromise anything in order to gain that power that he needed. He wasn't a fool who would be tempted by power. Power given wasn't something that he would be proud. It wasn't something that would get him out of his father's shadow. Naruto wanted to earn his power. He wanted to work himself hard in order to become something else. He wanted to stand proudly at his efforts. Danzo's offer was a little appealing. Perhaps if the man hadn't said he could make him strong and give him power, Naruto would have went along with the man. But he wanted to do something for himself. He wanted to learn his trade, come up with a style that would be unique to him. Given power wasn't what would make his light hit the elemental nations. His own sweat would do so. Progress was there. Naruto could feel it. He could see it. Not a year had passed and he had already improved greatly. What would he become in two more years? He would ser taught. The sound of a bell ringing cut through Naruto's thoughts. He'd reached his destination's Hizuraji weapons shop. As he walked into the shop, Naruto wandered around, looking for what he sought. Kunais of all kinds were at large. But Naruto wasn't going to stock for them. He was looking for a blade. The redhead passed the kunai section and wandered into a section of swords. He just stood there watching swords of all kinds. The weaponry was simply amazing. Beautiful even. Naruto could see himself owning such a stash inside his room. It's not very often you see someone your age looking at swords with such eyes, a broad voice behind Naruto, who didn't even turn to face the big bearded man who was behind him. There is no one like me, the redhead gave a response, his eyes still staring at the weapons put on display. The man merely chuckled at hearing that. You're certainly right about that, there is only one Uzumaki Naruto, he said, making the redhead turn to face him. Your father is a customer of mine. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a sword. Not short as a Kodachi. A katana made of strong chakra conducive material. Not a material that will break after two or three times of usage. 
I want a material that will be hard and not one that will disappoint me, Naruto said. I don't want to end up with a sword that will break easily. If it can be repaired, it will be fine. Hizuraji stared at the redhead for a long minute. It was like he was talking to a seasoned shinobi who wants a weapon that will be good for him in battle. How long exactly? Should it be light or heavy? Should it just be a straight sword? You're the expert. I'm sure you can make something that will be good for me in length, Naruto said. I want something light, straight and double-edged. He paused, tilting his head to the side. When can I expect it? The man laughed for a moment at the question. In a month. I have to order the material, lots of it since it will require repairs. You do know that a weapon like that will cost. Naruto nodded. Price isn't an obstacle, Naruto said before adding. I will return in three weeks to check the progress and try out of the samples. We will discuss the payments thereafter. It shall be done, Hizuraji said, holding out his right hand. Naruto took it and the man smiled. I look forward to seeing you more regularly, Uzumaki. Later. Itachi had been almost disappointed when Naruto didn't show up at the academy. This was the day that they'd agreed that they'd walk home together. Their compounds were not that far off each other. The Uzumaki compound was a little away from the village because of its holding of the QB and the fact that they liked to keep things hidden within their walls rather than invite other people in to know what was going in. Itachi wasn't bothered by that. He didn't think too deeply about it. He was most concerned by Naruto's no-show. What could have caused this absence? The redhead wasn't the one to miss classes even though it was obvious he saw it as a waste of time. Their sensei hadn't looked bothered by the absence. It was the fact that made Itachi think perhaps the redhead's absence had been known to the academy. It was possibly something to do with his clan. Naruto was a clan heir, so there were things that he had to do and attend to. Even his father sometimes took him away from the village so that he could learn a few things as the future leader of the Uchiha clan. Still, if the redhead had known about this, he would have told him yesterday. As Itachi reached the gates, he saw Naruto leaning against the frames with his hands inside his pockets and a look that clearly said and was outside the borders of the hidden leaf. The Uchiha shook his head. It was a class look. Naruto wore the same look when he was in class, when the sensei was teaching. Well, he couldn't disagree with the fact that the academy lessons had no benefit to people like them. He was simply going there for formalities. As Itachi reached the redhead, he spoke. I thought I'd just catch you another time, he said, stopping for a moment before Naruto straightened and the two made their way. I said I'd walk with you, Naruto was only willing to say before asking. So, what is the agenda behind this request? You don't look like the one to make friends or that sort. Itachi raised an eyebrow at that. What makes you think that? You don't even observe me to be able to tell. I, on the other hand, can tell that you don't try to make friends as you simply ignore everyone else in class, including the teacher. Naruto smiled. Ah, uh, you watch me a lot, huh, he said. But should you be the one to say? Maybe not, Itachi conceded. What happened? Naruto didn't respond. He was still waiting for Itachi to answer his question. The Uchiha stared at the redhead who appeared as if he hadn't heard him. It took him a couple of seconds to figure it out before he spoke. I do have a friend, Itachi said. And I think we will help each other grow if we got along. We are of the same age group and both in our own level in our generation. We can learn something from each other, Itachi paused for a moment. Plus my father thinks it will be best for me. Naruto didn't respond to that. He answered Itachi's question. There was a meeting with the Hyuga head clan at my compound. And as part of my training I had to be there. The indifference in Naruto's tone just made it obvious to Itachi that the redhead had been there physically, but his mind was somewhere else. 
Itachi shook his head, and as he did, what his father had said to him came to his mind. There is still some time. What do you say to a sparring session? I wish to understand you a little more. Naruto thought about it for a moment. That is fine, he said. Itachi was honestly surprised that the redhead had agreed. He didn't think he would. Why? Azumi has been bugging me about making a friend, and I think testing myself will tell me how far I have improved. You won't annoy me with things I don't want to hear, and we are in the same position, Naruto explained lightly. There was a slightly shrug of his shoulders, though. Why don't you agree to it at the academy? I have my reasons, Naruto said. I haven't run all day. I need a warm-up. Follow me to my training ground, that said, Naruto took off. Itachi blinked. He shook his head before following suit.